Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. With hosts Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're here live at MIT Information Quality Symposium in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the, the Tang Center. If you've never been to the Tang Center, um, it's sort of this hidden building uh, you know, behind uh, Memorial Drive. Uh, <laughs> I remember last year trying to find it. It was, it was kind of a, a difficult building to find. Mark, you ended up uh, halfway across Cambridge the other day. But, uh, but we're here and we've been going two days straight. This is our second year at the MIT IQ. Uh, it's really now sort of merging with the Chief Data Officer Forum and, and is taking on a, a focus of ch the Chief Data Officer. That's a role that's emerged within regulated businesses, particularly financial services, government, and, and healthcare. It's, it's touching and bleeding into some of the commercial businesses, although um, not, certainly not as rapidly. Uh, but those three that I mentioned and other regulated businesses are really adopting that CDO role uh, quite actively. And of course, it's all around data and data governance and, and data analytics. And we're going to touch on that, particularly with an HR angle here. Karen O'Leonard is here. She's the Vice President of Benchmarking and Analytics Research at uh, Deloitte. Uh, everybody knows Deloitte, uh, world-class organization, you know, one of the top three or four out there. So Karen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, so why don't we start with your, your role and your specific focus of your organization within Deloitte. Sure, well we uh, provide research tools and services to help HR organizations improve their organizational performance. Um, and so we have a number of different practice areas. Benchmarking and analytics is one of the key practice areas that I lead. Um, and so I'm looking at how to help HR leaders make better decisions, better talent decisions with their data. So it's really talent management is the focus uh, as opposed to sort of core HR. I, got a, I just had a baby, I need to. <laughs> I mean, that that <laughs> well, stuff is, 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 is sort of table stakes, but, but is, is, can we maybe a little HR 101 here? I mean, sure. there seem to be two, two worlds, right? There's the sort of bread and butter of you know, I, I need health insurance, and, and I get, you know, have my family plan, or whatever, we can all relate to. And then there's the, the piece that, you know, that organizational, you know, uh, performance experts worry about, which is how to drive performance. Um, are you involved in both, or what, where is the area of focus for, for Deloitte and your customers? Yeah, well, you know, there are a lot of different ways that organizations can and, and are using their talent data. So it could be, um, like, along the benefits angle, Understanding if we make a change in benefits, how will that um, influence our turnover? You know, will people want to leave if we change our compensation and benefit structure? How will that change our, you know, our turnover and how we try to retain people? Um, or on the leadership side, how can we understand what are the characteristics of successful leaders and then identify people with those characteristics and start growing with them, develop their skills, and you know, fill those skills gaps. Um, Recruiting is a huge area, probably uh, the biggest area within HR right now where analytics is used, because organizations you know, are finding really very hard to find talent. So how do we understand um, or predict who is going to be um, a high performer and how can we identify those candidates and bring them into our organization? And so what are you being asked to do by clients? Essentially build analytics solutions uh, that, that can, can drive performance? I, mean, I wonder if you can talk about yeah. you know, what, what activities you guys are performing. Well, right now in HR, you know, HR is lagging behind other functions in terms of its use of analytics. So the, the things I just mentioned about you know, predicting turnover or the consequences of a benefits change, those are about 14% of organizations are engaged in those kinds of advanced or predictive analytics. 86% you know, of HR organizations are still trying to make sense of the data that they have today. Um, and using that data to make better decisions. So we, we, call, we call that you know, being in one of the reporting phases, either an operational reporting phase or advanced reporting phase, but not doing it, drawing many meaningful insights from the data. So what we're looking mostly at helping HR organizations to do is try to get started with analytics. The HR leaders are under tremendous pressure from say their sales and marketing and finance folks to up their game with respect to using um, data to make better decisions. And so 
a lot of what we do is help them get started. You know, what are some of the foundational elements that they need to make better decisions to draw insights from their data? So data quality is a huge issue. That is a foundational issue within HR, and I think across all functions. Um, how to clean your data, integrate it, what skills do you need on your team? HR organizations are just now starting to build analytics teams, so what skills do they need? How do they develop those skills? How do they hire for those skills? So really, you know, most HR organizations are getting started. For the ones that are already there, you know, the 14%, we're helping them to um, find more value and draw more insights from uh, the efforts that they have already underway. So, uh, uh, to thinking about starting point, I think about ERP and, and maybe manufacturing, I think about the diversity of the data sets in that world is enormous. I mean, everybody's different. Is, is, is there more commonality in HR or is it, is, it, is it diverse like other businesses? Well, HR is using a number of different systems. So they might be using a, an applicant tracking system that has their recruiting data in it and pre-hire assessments. They are using a LMS, a learning management system, that contains um, all the data on employee training and development. They're using a performance management system that has the, the ratings of perfor uh, performance and, and different competency ratings on their employees. Um, they're using you know, a, a different compensation system that stores data on you know, what the salaries and, and benefits and compensation are. So they have to draw all those uh, data sources together and then blend that with you know, financial data from their finance group, from with maybe customer data, with sales data, with external data. So actually the problem, one of the key problems within, the, within HR is the number of different systems that they're using that all contain data that they need to apply to a business problem and then integrating all that data together. Uh, so I wonder what can HR professionals learn maybe from other parts of the organization that are using analytics? One example that strikes me is you hear a lot about customer analytics and um, telco providers, for example, trying to identify which are their most valuable customers and sometimes treating those customers differently. You don't want to lose your most valuable customer. Is that something you can apply similarly in HR analytics? You don't want to lose your most valuable employees. Exactly, yeah. So um, employee engagement is a huge area for analytics and understanding what's engaging employees um, what are the drivers? What are some of the levers you can pull to increase engagement? Um, you know, I, I saw some numbers yesterday about you know the, if you in, improve your employee engagement score, say by you know one one percent or two percentage points, you can improve your store profitability or your company you know reduce your company loss um, and turnover by you know magnitude magnitudes of an order of that, um, and so that's that is a huge area as far as learning from other groups. HR organizations are looking to other groups like finance and operations and, and sales and marketing to get some of the talent they need. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said, they're just starting their analytics team. They don't have the talent. Um, and so they can borrow talent, um, hire talent from those groups and learn from their processes and you know, apply those same kinds of methods that say uh, marketing is doing with identifying the best customers to, you know, how do I, we identify high performing employees, um, successful managers, mm -hmm. and then uh, use those characteristics to recruit and retain um, those targeted areas. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so talk about when you go into a, you know, a new client, a new HR organization, I mean, what's the typical, what are some of the challenges that a t they maybe a long time HR professional faces? I mean, do they, this is not just unique to HR, but the, I'm, I'm guessing the idea of data analytics is not necessarily come second nature to a lot of HR professionals. That's exactly um, right. What are some of the biggest challenges uh, in kind of transitioning existing HR professionals to take a more data-driven approach? And how do you go about actually not just training them, but getting them to kind of believe in the analytics and that this is a new way of doing things that's actually going to improve uh, yeah. the way they do their job? Well, yeah, like I said, a lot of HR people are sort of being pushed, pulled, prodded, coaxed into the analytics world, you know, sometimes from their colleagues in finance and marketing and sales and operations. Um, and so, you know, one of the biggest hurdles for them is just trying to understand, because they're not data savvy people, a lot of them anyway don't have data in their DNA. Mm -hmm. How, what, what can we even do with analytics? You know, where do we get started? We have a lot of data. Um, but they don't have the use cases you know, to, to help them understand where could we even start with applying, you know, and, and we always 
recommend start with the business problem. You know, talk right. to your business leaders. What what are their pain points? Is it I'm having problems recruiting um, talent, or I have really high new hire turnover, or you know our leadership pipeline um, looks very weak. So identify you know work with your business leaders to really understand you know what challenges they're facing, and then let's see what data is needed to help solve those challenges. Yeah, I mean it strikes me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know HR professionals, you know they're people. Mm -hmm. Persons, for lack of a better term, <laughs> right. um, you know, we, we here in, at, at Wikibon and the Cube often we talk we talk to a lot of IT professionals, and sometimes they're not as they're not people 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 persons. They're, they're more on focused on the tech. Right. Um, so they're kind of the, the challenge seems to be a little bit reversed. These are really right. people who are very good at engaging with others, communicating, but maybe that data part of the business is not something as you said that comes second nature to them. Right. Yes, and I think the blend. Um, the other thing. You know, it's really important to understand, you know, have data people and people, people. <laughs> um, and so the mature HR teams that we work with um, have a blend of both on their teams. So they'll have people on their teams who understand HR. Um, and they'll also have technical people who understand statistics, who have backgrounds in IT, who have backgrounds in um, database and, and can extract and manipulate data, who, uh, you know, can build statistical models. So it really is a complex mix of skills to lend to a business problem. If it, let's say your business leader wants to um, reduce new hire attrition or you know hire better quality candidates, that you know to solve that problem, you need a people you know a group of people with a blend of expertises, people with expertise in HR and recruiting, as well as people with expertise in statistics and database and IT. Um, people with strong consulting skills to you know, be able to understand that business problem and, the, and the, the business issues. So it really is a complex mix of skills to lend to a problem in order to you know, apply, a, apply analytics to help solving it. Gary, can you describe the maturity model, maybe take those 14% uh, with the, specifically in the, in the data and analytics world, um, you know, where, where, I mean, to help us draw the, the bell curve. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what that looks like and how you communicate to clients in terms of where the industry is, because benchmarking is part of what you do and, and where you want them to, to go or where sure. they want to go. Well, you know, we start our maturity model level one is just operational reporting. And these are organizations that, you know, are just, uh, HR, HR organizations that are just looking at operational measures. You know, what's our turnover? Um, how many managers have completed our sexual harassment training? You know, so it's very operationally driven, um, compliance-based driven, and very reactive. And a little bit over half of HR organizations are still at that first level. Um, then we move to level two, which we call advanced reporting. And this is where HR organizations are starting to uh, do a little bit more audience analysis, understanding their audiences, the, their different audiences' needs for data. So they start segmenting their data, they start customizing it, they start looking at trends, they start looking at benchmarks. Um, and a little bit over 30%, say 35, 36% of organizations are at that level. Then we get into two levels that really deal with analytics and insights. So level three we call advanced analytics and that's where you're starting to build statistical models to understand the relationships between variables. Let's say it's, um, it's not just um, we have a turnover problem, our turnover is increasing, that might be a finding at level two, it's why do we have a turnover problem? What's driving turnover and, and what talent initiatives can we put in place to uh, help mitigate it? Um, and 10% uh, of organizations are there. And then the very top level we call predictive analytics and that's 4% of HR organizations today and that's really taking a step further to see, you know, that same turnover example, it's who is likely to turn over or, or quit within the next 12 months, and what can we do to help them stay, um, and how can we help our organization plan for different levels of predicted attrition. So thinking about the software industry in general, where are they in terms of supporting this maturity model? Uh, uh, are, can, can they handle levels three and four? Do they need to do a better job there? What are you looking for from your software yeah. partners? Well, most of the big, you know, HR systems vendors have um, capabilities at levels one and two. They're really based around collecting the data and then reporting it. Um, and many, you know, have fairly sophisticated dashboards um, and self-service capabilities. So they're, that's at the level two. 
And then they're starting to get into levels three and four and helping to provide more advanced analytics, predictive analytics, but there's still a long way from providing you know, really what HR people need. Um, there's a lot of smaller vendors out there, smaller solution providers that have solutions for advanced analytics, predictive analytics, um, sort of off the shelf. But a lot of it is still done by the statisticians, by the you know the, the modelers using you know statistical packages or programming languages to do it. So you, I mean, Deloitte, all good consultants, system integrators are technology agnostic. Um, at the same time. You don't want to throw a bunch of you know, point products at your customers. Uh, so how do you deal with that dissonance? Will you actually, if, if a customer is really driving hard to a level four and you know, maybe the big enterprise you know, doesn't have all that, an enterprise software vendor doesn't have all those pieces, will you bring in some of those smaller specialists? Is that something that you generally try to avoid? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Um. In my organization, you know, we don't do consulting engagements. We do research and tools and help advise customers. So we'll advise a customer or a member on what options are out there. Um, they're certainly not, we get the question a lot of right. what's the best tool, what should we use, what's the best you know, uh, platform. It depends. But it, yeah, it really does <laughs> depend. Does. There are a lot of factors. <laughs> but we'll at least lay out the landscape um, of, of different options mm -hmm. and then you know, we can help an organization you know, go down that path of, of, of choosing one. Is that one of the challenges uh, when it comes to HR and analytics? That do, you see, do you find a lot of HR organizations think that maybe they can just you know, throw technology at the problem, buy a new application, buy a new data warehouse, and that's going to solve the problem? Oh yeah, that's, and a lot of HR people will come to us and say, what tool do I need? When really they need to start a lot earlier. A tool is not going to get them to level three or level four analytics despite what all the vendors you know, might be out there selling. I was at HR Tech last year and every vendor was, was selling a predictive analytics solution, but really they need to start at the, you know, the tool comes along you know, as part of the path, it's not the first step in the path. They have a lot of more work to do in terms of just looking at their data, their data quality, the skill sets they need. I think you know, the people using the tools, getting the skilled people to use the tools is more important than what tool do I need right away. So Karen, the, your business model, um, again, I'm fascinated by the benchmarking piece. You'll go into a senior uh, HR executive and they'll say, okay, I want to understand how I benchmark relative to my peers, is that right? And is that a service that you, you provide or am I thinking about that? No, that is part of the, the service that we provide. We, ha we have a lot of different metrics, um, mainly operational and efficiency-based metrics that HR organizations can benchmark themselves against. And since that's where a lot of HR organizations are now, that's you know, something that they use frequently. Um, and so uh, you know, benchmark against our metrics you know, is certainly something we offer. We can also benchmark um, organizations against their maturity model. So one of the things we try to help HR organizations do is understand where am I today um, and then where do I want to be? And it's not I'm at level one today and next year I want to be at level four. You know, it's, maybe I'm at level one today and over the course of the next year I get to level two and, and then build out a roadmap. But then we help them, you know, understand uh, what do I need to get there? You know, some prescriptive steps of if you're at level one now and, and we have 15, 20 different factors that go into an organization's maturity level and help them identify what are some of the key levers they can pull to improve their analytics capabilities. Okay, so last question, we're at the you know, CDO form, the, the MIT IQ. Uh, the dean yesterday said do something different, do something exciting, <laughs> he sort of challenged us all. Uh, I got my list in the back of my book here. Um, what's exciting you? Uh, any new ideas that came out of this conference? Um, you know, talk about that a little bit. What's excited me is just all the momentum behind you know, analytics. And you see here people from different industries, people from different job roles, you know, coming together to talk about you know, how analytics can be used to help organizations make better decisions, and then addressing some of the challenges. Um, I think there's been a lot in the media about how overhyped big data is. Um, but seeing people here, you know, really working on these issues and challenges and making, you know, uh, good to, better business value based on it is really exciting. As well as the talk yesterday where, uh, and this is something I believe in thoroughly, which is you don't really need big data and monumental, you know, um, 
uh, solutions to make incremental improvements in your business. You know, sometimes it's small data and it's you know small steps along the way um, that can get you you know much better business value. You have the Genie Ross prescription, right? Uh, that's, that's right. Uh, that's excellent. right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Tiara. Thanks very much for coming on the cube. It was really a pleasure having you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Uh, everybody keep it right there, we'll be right back with our next guest. We're live from the MIT Information Quality Symposium, the Chief Data Officer Forum. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back.